Introducing Google Bard. Now, if you don't know, Google are in a little bit of a battle with Microsoft in the artificial intelligence area. Now, this kicked off actually almost a year ago now with Google Lambda 2. Now, Lambda 2 was launched and naturally a lot of people were pretty impressed. Now, Lambda 2 didn't necessarily make its way to consumer availability, but it definitely impressed many people who knew that Google were creating AI technologies. Zoom forward six months and OpenAI introduced a whole host of products that really blew people out of the water. Now, when you look at that now, Microsoft have jumped on the OpenAI with a $19 billion investment and now a new focus on Bing that includes a improved 4.0 version of GPT-3. Now, Microsoft are definitely taking this battle to Google, but what is Google's response and what is Google Bard? Now, Google Bard was announced at the Live from Paris event that Google recently hosted. They went into a bit more depth into what it actually included and their efforts there. So what is Google Bard? Now, Google Bard is very simply a chat GPT-like application and an effort to try and combat this new AI arms race. And there was an announcement and an overview at the Live from Paris event, and they covered a few good examples that I wanna go through. They showed that you can ask it what car selection and decisions you need to make around that, pros and cons around a particular decision of that, and including recommendations for trips and planning. Now, Google said in that event that the system will take and use less computing power and that it's currently available for trusted testers to get started with, which basically means a private beta. However, I'm sure Google will be rolling this out as soon as possible in an effort to try and catch up with Microsoft's Bing. Now, there is some AI that's likely going to roll out in search much sooner, and they're calling it Nora, which basically means no one right answer. And it's for those questions that are particularly difficult that are maybe associated with a preference or a choice, and they're going to embed that generative AI technology in Google search with a focus to try and improve diversity, creators, and a focus on an open web so that you can bring in the most useful recommendations for you. Now, Google do want to expand their search and experience. So for example, photos in uh, Google Images, they will begin to combine, for example, six angled photos of shoes and be able to make a 360 photo from there. And they're doing a few different things when it comes to recommendations of pairings and things to go with certain things. So a little bit like uh, your micro managing or managing a Pinterest board, but much more suitable for using generative AI technologies. Now, to be honest, Google have a good product here in terms of their Google Bard experience, but it doesn't look like it's really touching the surface against what Bing can do at the moment, but only time will tell because Bing's offering looks much more competitive in terms of the different ways that you can utilize Bing to get things done for you. But I definitely think Google being sort of ignored here, Google have probably the biggest access to people's phones globally. And I think that can play a huge access for people using Google phones to get this AI embedded into their systems. And I feel like that's great for the consumers. The more concerning area that I have with Google is its lack in workspace uh, technology and innovation and their design and look of how they're going about that. And the efforts that Microsoft are putting into making their enterprise package and workspaces a lot better. So I think Google probably need to focus on workspaces and drill down and improve the consumer outreach they have with phones and search already. So that was an overview of Google Bard, very much early days technologies and currently in the hands of only trusted testers, but we will see as time goes on. If you're new here, hit subscribe. We are Keep Productive, we cover productivity tools. And if you're looking for a productivity tool, do check out Toolfinder. Thank you very much, folks. Thank you very much for watching today's video. If you're interested in checking out some more, you'll find them here. And also you can subscribe to as well. It'd be great to have you here to optimize your tool. And if you're interested in our new email newsletters or our Bento application, or even Toolfinder, which is a new tool that we've created to help you find the perfect productivity tool, you can find it linked in the description.